this is part three of our service recap from speaking to the mountain up in Cherokee and then how they've come to Florida with their testimonies and taking the fire to other places. Uh, just in part one, we just talked about just their experience coming up to Cherokee and the faith that it took just even to get there and some of the people they met, some of the testimonies and things they saw. Part two, we talked about how uh, Bernie had gone to his cousin's church to minister and he broke out in his own Speak to the Mountain anointing and just how that switch of faith has been kept on. And, and now this part three, we're going to talk about, uh, Joe's had some, some testimonies about a holy wind of God blowing in when some people were getting filled with the Holy Ghost, like Acts 2-4, upper room experience, upper room wind. And then some of the testimonies when they went street witnessing to invite people to come to the event on the reservation. So, yeah, um, God said identity for everybody. So before I got into the conference, he says, I want you to plant a small seed for everyone, that they have an identity, each and every pastor or apostle or anybody that was involved in that church, to be encouraged when they go out there and give the word that they're going to have the Holy Anointing on. And uh, Apostle Eric says, well, let's just do street witnessing. And I said, wow, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. So I gave the word. I was like, Adam, you look like Luke Cage from Marvel. And he just looked at me and he goes, who? And I was like, bro, he's strong. He's bulletproof. Like nothing can penetrate him. And uh, that was the plant of the seed that God told me because it created identity with God. So he started to swell up in the Holy Spirit. And then he started to walk. So God says, you're going to go with them. We'll do street witnessing. And they're like, I don't know what to do. What's, what do what'd you do? How do you? I said, just let the Holy Spirit lead. And I said, God wants you to care for other children and other people. And just to see how they are. Don't try to, like, throw this. Or you got this event. You need to come. Just, just play cool. So the first place that we go to, which is so funny, was called Resnex. Nice. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like, this place, God? He goes, yeah. First one to go, and I'm like, oh, praise Jesus, help us. So we get in there, and there's a big sign that says, Jesus is amazing and love. And I'm like, yes. And um, Adam, uh, Pastor Adam, what's up, brother? Love you, man. Love you, Gosh man. Will, Tennessee. Love you, man. Luke Cage. So, uh, we go in there, and he saw a water thing, and then we just like... And my hey. sister, too. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Um, so, anyways, we were, we were in there, and um, we were just talking with him, and he was a native. And I'm like, no way, you're a native. I'm like, that's cool. So, what's your name? He goes, Chief Crow. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Resnecks, Chief Crow. And then I was like, hey, I, I, the Lord showed an image of this big black crow, right? All of a sudden he goes, oh, this one right here, this big crow right here, I almost, I don't, I jumped out of my seat and was like, wow, God is good. And we just started talking, and I'm like, yeah, come to the conference, man, it's just for a party. That's it, just come. So after that, uh, it was just a blessed time. We go across the street, we like, let's get some ice cream. I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. So we go in there, and... Um, it was just awesome because we started talking to the lady and she's like, you know, um, Adam says, oh, do you believe in God? She's like, eh. So God switched it on him. He just turned a switch. I started talking about other things. like, listen, it's not that. We're not a, no, no, we're non denominated It's just a party. You go out there and you chill and you have fun. And you just pray and just have fun. I'm a party. All of a sudden, in the midst of six of us, this lady's like, are you the boss? man, and I'm like, I'm wearing shorts, tank top, and I'm the, actually the smallest guy there, because there's a lot of big guys there. Yeah. Adam's no, pretty big. Yeah. Ad, Adam. And Mark was pretty big. They were like 6'2", yeah. and I'm this little guy, you know, It's like, you're the boss, and then Mark just wanted to add on to that and just say, yeah, he's the boss, man. I'm Buck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Buck. <laughs> so I started... That is so you, too. Yeah, so I went... <laughs> yeah, praise God. <laughs> Yeah. So I started to go about the, you know, to find out about the golf thing. Is the, the, the you know, the golf thing. And, uh, the putt putt? Putt putt, yeah. Putt putt. Amen. And what's funny is the concrete's this way, so the ball just falls off. And I said, you have to put it against the thing. So I started talking to her. 
And um, she just told me her last name. And it was, <laughs> I know, oh my gosh, what was her last name? This is an awesome moment. I love when he's like this. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> the Holy Spirit hit me so hard, I forgot. Amen. Her name was like Dance or something. And I'm like, I don't give a Dance. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's a, I said, you know what? You have a blessed name. And she would just laugh at it. I was like, in agreement. I was like, God is good. And that all that love just was just pouring out on each other. That's the intimacy with the Lord that you could just meet anyone out of love. And we were just talking in agreement. I said, yeah, just come if you want to come to the um, to the event. And, you know, it was just a blessed time. She let us put posters on many of the stores. And we had a lot of, uh, you know, awesome encounters. Because that's what God wants. Meet random strangers. Mm-hmm. Have a great conversation. So I go back to the lady up in the front that's not kind of like there yet. And I look at the book, Psychology. So I was like, you know, I've taken psychology. She's like, well, how long have you taken that? She goes, doing this and that. And then just the Lord spoke onto her. And then she started to become at ease. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she just put down that barrier like, oh, you're not trying to, you know, Bible thumb me or something. Like, no, I just want to be out of love. And we became really uh, good friends. We got to know her name. And just a great out- outfit because me, Adam, and Mark had a remarkable experience. So not only that, we step outside, Adam sit in front of me, and all of a sudden this yellow butterfly the size of Texas goes between me and Adam. I'm like, dude, did you see that? Not only once, twice, twice. So uh, that was just an amazing experience. Now, we had service that night. And it's crazy because... Uh, Lay is like, I, I need somebody to do photography. No one's ever photographed me or take a video camera. I said, I'll do both. She goes, Are you kidding me? I'll do it. I said, No, I, I have no job. I just listen to the Lord, and as the Lord led me to do both. And we're on stage, and Apostle Eric says, Let the thunder hit. Mm-hmm. And as soon as that word T left his mouth, all of a sudden, thunder hit. Yeah, thunder hit. Thunder hit. Yeah, this is this is what I saw from the from the sound area. Yeah, yeah sound area. A lightning struck <laughs> right across, <laughs> in the distance. Yeah, on the opposite where Leo was at. Oh my! <laughs> so I'm looking. I'm like, this is gonna be crazy. And, and go ahead. And then all of a sudden, we had new. He stuff. says it's time to move forward. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, I'm video cameraing <laughs> from the back. So I'm video cameraing because Betsy's up there. I was like, what? Betsy's up on stage as Bertie's wife? I was like, I got to videotape this right now. Because she's praying over someone, and this is the first time. And I'm like, this is amazing. Praise mm-hmm. the Lord. All of a sudden, the wind starts to pick up, and then it went. All of a sudden, it blew everything on the stage. It was just absolutely amazing. So what happened was, while I was like, she, the painting fell onto the floor, and as she was picking up, I was helping picking up things. Little did I know that the camera was facing to the ground. It was just the blood of Christ on the ground. It was just so magical because that's all God. He was just like a new leaf. We're going to all move forward. I'm going to blow all this old stuff away. And that you're going to have a new covenant. And sure did. Because after that, I mean, there's been so many experiences with everyone that it changed their lives forever. Yeah. Like, God is like, I am tired of putting a holy anointing as far as, like, love. I'm going to give them an uppercut punch. When I see them, I'm going to give them love. If they're going to, it's going to stamp in them that they're going to receive something. That's going to last forever for a lifetime and another lifetime and another lifetime with Christ. It will minister to others, and that's the branch, the lightning striking from, from all of our heads, and then the holy fire just filling them up. That's what God wanted. So, you know, it was just an absolutely amazing experience with Bernie and Eric and everyone else, Adam, everybody that was involved. And everyone, like I said, Mark wanted to implant identity. Because as soon as I walked in the door, he's like, identity for him. Identity for her. Everyone has an identity with me, and you're going to tell them that they have an identity through me. And I'll prove it with a word, or one, or two. There we go. And, and amen. It's just Eagle, Doctor Strange. We had She Hope. We had Rogue. 
Iron Man, Juggernaut, Phoenix, Phoenix Eagle. <laughs> I mean, so many characters. But just God is good because he was he was building up his own team, the yeah. God Avengers. Let me introduce introduce this too, because people that are that are watching this may. This is maybe different than the way they do Jesus. Yes. Nah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very. <laughs> Definitely outside the box. Yeah. And I want to read you a verse out of 1 Corinthians 12. This is the amplified version of the, of the Bible. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, let's look at verse... Actually, chapter 14 is what I'm looking for. Not 12, but 14. And uh, verse 26, out of the Amplified, 1 Corinthians 14, 26, and it says, What then, brethren, is the right course? When you meet together, each one, this is each one, each one, mm. not anyone, not somebody, help me God, somebody sometime this year, but every one of you, when you come together, has a hymn. And that's not talking about a H-I-M, girls. Get it. A teaching. A disclosure of special knowledge or information. Wow. An utterance in a strange tongue or an interpretation of it. But let everything be constructive and edifying and for the good of all. Paul himself said in verse 6, I believe it is, of this same chapter, he says, Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking in unknown tongues, uh, how will I make it to your advantage unless I speak to you either in revelation, disclosure of God's will to man, in knowledge or in prophecy or in instruction? Uh, and so he's talking about Colossians 119 or Philippians 119 mm -hmm. a supply of the spirit yes. everyone making their supply in Ephesians 411 every joint supplies yes. and so we're really encouraging Holy Ghost supplies absolutely and those that come and I and that's what I'm hearing being described right now Amen. you brought a supply you came with it yeah you came with it and what a difference an attitude makes in coming to bring something to service as opposed to coming to get something from service. You can get something. People do it all the time. Jesus is a giver. For God so loved, he gave. Right. But how much more do you get Do you get when you come giving? Mm -hmm. Tag. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing when you go to a place anticipating seeing God work. Mm -hmm. But it's even more amazing when you're anticipating to receive God's word, to receive God's word, act upon it, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> to receive God's word, act upon it, right? And again, connect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got to. We've got to a point where it's not just. It's not just fun to wish for it. This is not Disney World. <laughs> not to bash Disney. I love Disney. Don't get it twisted. We got to stop. We got to stop acting like this is. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole world I, you know? You got to stop because this is real. You know? One of the examples that God began to show me is that our supernatural is our natural. If people are believing in ghosts and they're believing in the demonic that it's real now. They even making movies all oh, based off of a real story. They have to 
be able to start believing that the good side also has a remedy to getting that under control. And I really believe, even, you know, stepping into everything that we're getting ready to step into in this season, in this dispensation, okay, the body woke up. Like I put down, it's sad, but I'm happy to know that there's still a remnant that's coming with fire and love and with their swords swinging. Okay? Because it's beautiful to say that you love Jesus and you know Jesus. God is all good. God is all good. God is all good. But when he tells you, will you react? You know what I'm saying? Will you react? That stutter step, I haven't seen that stutter step since I went over there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I got back and I've had to remind certain people, don't forget what we were told. Don't forget that you have peace. Don't forget that the peace of God that's upon you, you're going to have to fight for it sometimes. There's going to be times where that peace is there and it's going to need for you to step in and say, you are not going to take this from me. So we have to get that way. We have to get that way. This whole meek Christian that they're expecting is no longer a meek Christian. Start looking at this, this little lamb Look at the lion that's behind it. You know? Yep. Stop looking at the little lamb. The little lamb is there to give you love, to give you... Oh, <laughs> I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's there to show you the delicacies, the, the sensitivity, the embrace of the Father, of Jesus. To show you that, you know what? He's there to love you, to care for you. But guess what? Don't mistake it. There's a lion right behind that lamb. That lion bites. That lion will tear you to shreds if you try to mistreat that lamb. And that's what we need to get back into. Okay? I used to have a problem turning on my switch on keeping the anointing going. And focusing on what God is telling me to do is like if there was no reason to have a show, turn it off. And God told me, why are you trying to save electricity? I own Tico. Okay. God said, leave the switch on. So now people are looking like, oh, okay, well, you're just trying to be, I'm not trying to be nothing. I'm just being a reason. So, um, rewinding the clock a little bit before I got to, I almost didn't go because of other reasons too, I'm just going to be really honest with you. Um, I had surgery for sinus, for chronic cyanitis, and it was pretty bad, it knocked me out for two months. Yep. So I was in a state of like, abyss. So, I was at my weakest point in my life. So, scripture, God says, read. 2 Corinthians 12, 9-10, uh, NIV, I'll read it to you. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for yeah. you, for my power is made in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficult for why I'm weak that I'm strong. So when I'm on the trip, I'm feeling like I have nothing to give. I'm like, this is bananas. I'm like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. and, but as soon as the door opened, God says, do this, an identity. And I'm like, oh, that's the Holy Ghost. Okay. And I had to sit three hours before I had to tell uh Apostle Eric, that he's Dr. Strange. So I'm marinating on this. I'm like, I'm not telling. Can, can I interject a testimony yes. to undergird yeah. yours as yeah. well? Because <laughs> last night, we, I filmed a video in the Dunedin Causeway earlier in the day yeah. and told people, if you need prayer, email in for prayer. Yeah. And many people from all over the world, all over the country and all over the world, yeah. did. 
And we just so happened to be walking to go eat. And I'm reading a, a comment on the video. And it's from an, uh, an Asian Christian, an Asian mm-hmm. saint, mm-hmm. That, that, that says, pray, please pray for me. I'm dealing with sinusitis yeah. <laughs> and ringing in my ear. I and, read that. And, and I looked over at Joe, and I'm like, he's like, I just went through that. Yes. And I'm like, you're Asian. <laughs> yeah. So this, this is yours. <laughs> and and, they, and they're, they're living in Hong Kong, and he's like, I'm Chinese. Yeah. So I'm like, this is a no-brainer. Right. Wow. And so Joe sends a voice prayer to Hong Kong <laughs> because he's just beaten down sinusitis through the power made strong in weakness. And it was funny because when I saw it, that's the first person I thought about. I'm like, he needs to get in touch with Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> was it. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, and it was just awesome because we, I just sent the prayer and then God just showed this green, just kind of like gr- bright green, that his presence was just cleaning that up. And that it said, he wanted to say it's of the natural, of the land, that this is this is me. I made this and I made you whole and I'm going to set you free. So I'm sitting in service for three hours. Now, which is funny because the testimony about the white Indian, I, it was the same thing. I had to wait three hours before I got to tell him. And when I was in service, the first time, I sat there for three hours. He goes, you have to interrupt them now. I'm like, really? Though? Like, they're like talking. I don't want to interrupt them. He goes, say it now or never. I'm like, oh, I love the way he says that because I will say it. So I said it, and he's like, uh, you know, it's the Indian heritage. So that ministers to me. And, yeah, a few days later... Um, the next day. The next day. Yeah, he uh, sees a video. And, w- and it was really specific. He said white feathers and red tips. God's very specific. He doesn't leave any anything out. So I'm sitting there with Dr. Strauss. I'm not saying this to him. This is just bananas. I haven't been in it. I'm at a weak point. And he just says, keep saying it to him. Say it to him. He kept saying it. And he just kept reminding me. So as the service went... He, he, I gave him a hug. I said, oh, by the way, you're Dr. Strange. And <laughs> all the rest is history, praise the Lord. And now he's becoming a doctor and at the end of the year. I mean, I, God is just amazing. And that's what he wants to do for all of you, to impart that in everyone and just launch. I that. Amen. Launch, because it's the identity he wants to give. No more of this, like, you're this little person. You're not, you're not a little person. Lord. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone has an identity. And you're going to just blow up because God's hitting his thunder. He's not playing. He's going to uppercut everyone in the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be charged. Everyone's going to be running and just, you know, just doing the work, the, the work of God because he loves everyone. Faith, hope, and love. The most important is love. So, okay. Well, praise the Lord. That's going to be part three recap. And uh, I think we've got about an hour and a half on this. I think that's really good. Yes. Um, why not stretch forth your hands towards those that are watching? And, and just if the Holy Spirit just speaks anything to you about anybody, or you know, just lead us out in prayer, and we'll close uh, accordingly. So. All right. Praise God. Um, right now, there's a person that has um, pain in their right hip. God showing me pain in their right hip right now it was an injury that you had a bad fall um it might have been at work but you 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 have a bad fall you took it lightly but you know you you're like maybe i i you know i'll just wait for a while and i'll let it heal but god's letting you know right now that his hand is going to be on your hip right now this evening is going to be on fire and he's going to fix your hip in jesus name right now it's not even, you don't have to sleep, you know, as you're laying there or as you're watching this, God's going to heal your hip right now. Um, also, there's a person right now that has, um, they call it a golfer's, a golfer's elbow or a, a, like a tennis elbow. Uh, tendonitis. Yeah. Tendonitis on the elbow. I used to have, I, I had an accident way back when, and I had that, so I'm very familiar, um, somebody just got it, they just got it, it was, um, 
it wasn't, it's just wear and tear. It's just wear and tear from laboring, doing your job. Um, God wants to just bless you right now. All your joints, all your, your even starting from your elbow, but you're going to have your, your elbows, um, your knees, your ankles, and your back right now is going to be healed in Jesus' name. Um, every tendon, every muscle, every, every bone, that is out of place or is thinning out every every uh, ligament right now that is out of whack that is that is causing pain right now in Jesus name we just pour his blood upon your body right now it's gonna be like fire it's gonna be like fire like uh, if you've seen the other um, videos it was a refinery you're in a refinery right now and God is just gonna put his fire on every tendon every joint everything He's going to bring it back to where it originally was. You're going to feel like a 21-year-old kid again. And you're going to be doing the things that God called you to do because you're doing what God is calling you. But now you'll be able to have it with more um, with, with, with more authority and, and more freedom to be able to um, continue on and doing your work for daddy God. Amen? Amen. We're declaring those healings. Amen. Um, God showed me a green pasture. Um, he planted seeds. This is for everyone because God likes to reach to everyone. So this is for all people, each one, as Eric said. Um, they grow to flowers that are yellow. So it's beautiful and it's green. A lot of green and a lot of pasture. A lot of green and a lot of flowers. That, that means that we're going to have new lands. Mm -hmm. So the new land means that this is going to where God's going to let us operate to minister to many people and it's going to be refreshing come on now oh man he just on right now refreshing refreshing yes. everyone's going to be refreshed because why would if you're on a green pasture and everything's beautiful the sun is shining just refreshing for all people so when we all get there to to minister to all these people you're going to be refreshed you're yes. going to be loved you're going to be encouraged you're going to have the holy anointing just hit you upon you uh when the sun uh, shines, and that you know, we're all dancing, we're all dancing, and we're all just praying on on each other. Joe each likes other. to dance. Uh, yeah, I want to read a prophecy that Brother Copeland uh, posted to Facebook, and I shared it to my wall just a little while ago. He says, "I have news for you. Every seed sown for the last two thousand years, every word preached, every tear and drop of blood shed is coming." up now exclamation point all 2,000 years worth of gospel seed planted is coming up a hundredfold and we're the ones to bring it in it's time for the final harvest of souls millions of souls so let's get to it oh come on, come on man that's awesome hallelujah I think we'll end with that yeah, that's Absolutely. good <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Take it easy. Take care.